Uh, I welcome you. So my name is Wolfgang Dirk, company Gerresheimer, and uh, I have the pleasure to uh, give you some information about our new development, the high performance plastic vials uh, with improved gas barrier. Uh, I would like to introduce Gerresheimer very short in, in, in three slides. Um, Gerresheimer uh, has uh, two major segments in products. One is uh, dealing with the production of primary packaging, uh, either glass bottles, plastic containers, closures, caps and seals, ampules and cartridges, glass vials, and then uh, as a new part, the multi-shell plastic vials, uh, which I introduce you during the presentation in more detail. Uh, this, the second part of the, of the business is uh, dealing with uh, medical devices. And uh, just uh, to give you a short overview, we are uh, considering syringes also as devices. Um, and we have a very well-known um, brand, the RTF syringes, manufactured in our site in Bünde. We, have, uh, we are a major producer of pens uh, for, for insulin as a major uh, application. We also serve the industry with auto injectors, inhalers, uh, a lot of lancing devices, and also infusion sets are within our portfolio. The total revenue um, Gerasheimer is achieving uh, was in 2012 1.2 billion euro. Uh, we are internationally present and uh, are in, in all, all in all about 11,000 employees in the company. Uh, I'm working for the business unit which is dealing with primary packaging made from plastic and uh, this uh, business unit is then segmented uh, in, in uh, four different container types. One is, uh, work is uh, produced for solid, for solid means tablets, the other one for ophthalmic applications, then we have uh, uh, containers made from PET and finally then the, the parental um, segment uh, where the initial introduction is then the multi-shell vials. Uh, why we went to that and I think the major driver to use plastic vials uh, instead of glass vials uh, is, is uh, then here mentioned in these four points. Why we reference to the glass vials is that the glass vials uh, right now are the major material and the major container type used for parental applications in vials. The major driver, as far as we learned from, from market uh, exchanges, are the breakage uh, uh, due to, to, to during the filling and the storage or the distribution. Uh, the other part is uh, the incompatibility to, uh, of some drugs uh, towards uh, the surface of glass. And there are two points uh, which uh, we have to separate there. One is uh, uh, related to the high pH well of so some drug solutions which are really attacking the glass. And the other part is then related to metal ion which are extracted uh, or leaching, are literally are leaching into the drug solution over time. Uh, the, the third reason why, why plastic vials are considered are basically the, the specific interaction between drug solutions from biological drugs compared to, to the glass. And uh, finally, uh, we, have, uh, we also see a certain interest in the market for plastic vials with a specific design, which are, is not easy to achieve or impossible to, to achieve with glass as material. So when we developed the vials, we had also, we screened the agenda, uh, let's say the, the, the uh, the specification which we need to, to fit and to hit with, with plastic vials as replacement uh, of, of glass vials. And, and you can see that we then selected uh, the most important uh, requirements here in the table, brake resistance, uh, the, the gas barrier, chemical resistance, pH resistance, and so on. And then we compared the major materials which are in the market available. Glass as reference, you can see with a double plus in, in, in some of these uh, um, requirements or uh, characteristics uh, performs very well. And this is the reason that glass has been the major material used for these kind of, of containers. And then we went through the available polymers in the market 
uh, which are, uh, let's say, also available for pharma applications. And polyethylene and polypropylene is a very established material in the market, but unfortunately not transparent. And transparency is for vials a very important characteristic. So then you can look into polyamide, PET, COP, and COC. Also, polycarbonate is available, but not for pharmaceutical use. And, and when you combine then the two materials, COP and polyamide, the good characteristics, you end up with, with, a, with a quite interesting characteristics of a vial or a polymer, so which I marked then in red at the right side of the table. So you end up with a high break resistance, reasonable barrier against um, gases, and, and, and of course a uh, uh, high level of pH resistance, extractables, and so on. And the weakest point still remains uh, is the, the uh, resistance against heat. This remains, of course, not comparable to glass. So this was the combination. So we end up by, by selecting polyamide and COP as materials in a multi-layer composite with high break resistance, uh, high barrier, uh, very uh, superior inertness against high pH, pH value solutions, and also achieve a low level of extractables, low level of drug control interaction in some specific cases, as well as the, the important transparency. Um, we selected uh, co-injection blow molding as technology to achieve that. And uh, the, the idea behind was to keep the drug contact with COP which is known to be a very inert material towards drug solution, and then um, produce the container in a way that the barrier, which is created by the polyamide, uh, is completely covered by the COP. Uh, for, for this uh, construction and, and concept, we have been um, also then awarded with a German packaging award. So we, we tested these vials against the, the different kind of, of gases which are important in the, in the industry, means oxygen transmission, carbon dioxide transmission, and water vapor transmission, and compared then polypropylene vials, which are also in the market for some specific applications, COP monolayer, then our multi-shell concept, and of, as reference tubular glass. And we can tell you tubular glass is really the reference, uh, as you can see, there was uh, almost uh, no uh, measurable transmission uh, with this test which we applied for that. And uh, in the second uh, uh, result, you can see that the, the multi-shell vials with the polyamide as barrier layer for, for gas transmission uh, then achieved a quite significant progress compared to the monolayer versions, either COP or polypropylene. When you even compare polyethylene with that, you will end up uh, with, with higher values than polypropylene. So, but of course, uh, we are still remaining with a certain, um, compared to glass, with a, with a not so high level of, of barrier. But uh, to a little bit uh, relative, uh, uh, make this, uh, uh, this test result more relative, we tested the total system. And uh, we selected here in this presentation the oxygen barrier, where especially polyamide is a very strong barrier. And we tested in the system separately means we tested the vial oxygen barrier and the stopper oxygen barrier and compared then the, the total barrier of the system, uh, comparing the monolayer vial, the multi-shell vial, and the tubular glass vial. And you can see the blue ones represent the blue uh, uh, represents the oxygen barrier of the vial. Uh, the yellow one represents the oxygen barrier of the stopper, which is of course in all cases the same. And the green one then the system uh, barrier performance. And there you can see that uh, the system is in the multi-shell vial very comparable to the glass vial. So over the long run, you will see not a big difference between the multi-shell plastic vial with the stopper on top compared to a glass vial. And I think this is confirming very much the result which we uh, and the feedback which we received from our customers uh, uh, when they compared and used our plastic vials in their test with oxygen sensitive products. Of course, the question will be 
makes this sense to use a plastic vial, and, and this is known in the market that a plastic vial is uh, significantly more expensive than a glass vial. And uh, to make it more visible, we calculated an easy case study on that using a 10 milliliter vial, for example, filled with 10 milliliter drug solution with a value of one euro per milliliter, an example. That means we have a, we have a drug uh, value in the vial of 10 euro. Uh, and then applying that we are losing oxygen by 7% and, uh, in, a, in a normal plastic vial with monolayer uh, concept. And that means you have to overfill the vial with 7%, means 107%. The filling value is now 10 euro, 10 euro and, and 70 cent. Comparing then the multi shell vial, where you lose only 2% uh, by oxygen. In this phase, you have to overfill only with 2%, means the value is 10, point, uh, 10 euro 20. When you compare then the value of the solution with, with the value of the vial, which you have to buy from outside, then uh, you see the significant difference here. And uh, then uh, you end up with a certain advantage uh, with regards to the, uh, to the vials. Uh, so that could be the case with the oxygen situation. A similar case we can calculate with a brake resistance, which is, of course, easy to, to be better for plastic vials compared to glass vials. And we have tested that with a simple setting, uh, uh, dropping a, a metal ball through a tube on the vial. When you compa uh, compare this with a glass vial using a, a 40 gram ball, uh, dropping from 40 centimeters, uh, then the glass vial is already destroyed. Uh, in our case, to, to start destroying the plastic vial, you have to apply a ball with 130 grams at, from 80 centimeters height. And then you start only to, to impact a certain level of the outer shell of the vial. Even with going then a step further, as I show you in the picture on, on the right side, this vial has been treated by a tool and you only destroy the outer shell, the polyamide layer is not able, you are not able to destroy that. So that means the vial uh, keeps integer, although the, the outer shell has been de damaged. That means we have here a benefit with uh, reduced, uh, with uh, let's say improving the safety on one end, and then of course reducing the product loss. Um, there are also some guidelines already in place which recommends to, to use where needed, especially when safety is, is, a, is a major concern. Uh, to use plastic valves and some manufacturers uh, for, for diagnostic area already have done this major decision and really 100% replaced glass vials for tests uh, against plastic vials. <coughs> and, and we see also this trend is now with the, with the feedback from the market also taking place with, within the parental area for the pharmaceuticals. And we see here, especially the market for those drugs with, uh, which are in the area of cytotoxics, means uh, the cancer treatments, hormones, and narcotics. And here also you can easily do the same case study by calculating the value of the solution against the break, loss of break, and you can easily <coughs> bring together that the value is given by, by replacing a, a glass vial by a plastic vial. <coughs> and last but not least, I mentioned that is also the uh, one important driver to, to look into plastic vials instead of glass vials is that, that high pH value solu drug solutions attack the glass and then create in, in uh, severe cases even um, glass flaking in the inner surface of the vial and this can be then in the very, very bad uh, situation even um, uh, then to, to, to a situation that the glass particles will be injected into the patient. And in some cases, you, in, in the intravenous <coughs> case, you, in, the, in some cases, you will then create uh, severe health problems with the patient. <coughs> the metal ion content for the polymer is also very low because we don't use metal metal ions in the, in the production of the, of the polymer compared to glass vials which are produced from metal, metal oxides from metal oxides and these metal oxides are then released to the drug solution especially when you have then sensitive products to metal ions 
you have a negative effect on the stability of the drug solutions. And finally, we, we see also a very good, and, and this is, I think, one of, of, of a big driver for the future drugs, uh, which are uh, dealt as biodrugs or biosimilars, where customers uh, seriously look into plastic vials as alternative, either COP monolayer vials or multi-shell vials, and recognize that we have in, in uh, selected cases a, a different behavior in the absorption of the drug solution on the surface of the, on the inter under surface of the drug container. On the left side, I show you then uh, you see the vials, the plastic or COP based vials, where you can see then that the absorption in the in the second vial uh, from the from the left side is about three to four percent of the drug solution. And on the glass vial surface, you observe then uh, an absorption of eight to nine percent. The outer vials, means on the left and the right side, are the reference vials to see and to prove that the test is not coloring the, the glass surface, but but the, uh, the, the the albumin solution which we used uh, as reference for this drug. So when you here calculate the business case <coughs> based on the cost of the solution, you can gain quite a lot of safe savings. The multi-shell vials show some advantages against glass vials, like the brake resistance, <coughs> the, ma the metal ion content, and the absorption in some cases. And against plastic vials, we have an improved gas barrier. We have the uh, improved crack resistance, especially when you hit the vials very severe. And we have very low extractables compared to other polymers. So conclusion out of that, multi-shell vials should be considered for future stability studies in comparison or parallel to glass vials and see if, if there are significant advantages which, which justify them the, the use of plastic vials to improve the efficiency of the drug. Either to achieve a higher inertness against high pH value drug solutions to limit the absorption of the product on the container surface and improve then of course the dose accuracy and finally to have a more stable drug against oxidation compared to monolayer plastic vials. So in, in the Gerresheimer, we decided then, of course, to offer the market with three different settings, <coughs> either bulk, ready to sterilize, or ready to use. <coughs> so these are the detailed specifications we apply on these different settings. And our <coughs> summary is then that we believe the economic effects will be either um, on the image situation, so that we improve the image, so you can place and differentiate a product against glass vials by much higher improved um, safety. Then, of course, you can, over along the supply chain, achieve some advantages uh, regarding brake assistance, either in the storage, in the transportation, or in the handling later on at the patient or the, the health workers in the hospitals. And of course, in case you are looking into new investments, you can even achieve savings of new washing, washing equipment, uh, WFI generator or depurinization oven, when you are uh, looking into ready-to-use vials, for example. So I finished. I'm ready. Many thanks for your attention. Um, I'm, of course, available for questions. Thank you.